There's a fairly obscure sutta where the Buddha makes an important statement. He says that the Dhamma is to be found, it's to be gained through two things, commitment and reflection. You commit yourself to the practice, and then you watch. In other words, you don't simply watch whatever's going to come up in the mind. You watch the mind as it's actually trying to give rise to skillful qualities and abandon unskillful ones. Of course, the two processes go together, because as you develop more and more skillful qualities, you'll be able to see things more clearly, reflect with more wisdom, more discernment. And if we apply this way of looking at the Dharma to, say, the five faculties, we see how this is so. You start out with conviction. You take as working hypotheses the principle that the Buddha really was awakened. And you think about the lessons of his awakening, how they apply to you. Because when the Buddha talks about conviction, he's talking about three things. Who you believe, what you believe, and what you do is in response. In this case, we believe the Noble Ones, the Buddha as the primary Noble One. In terms of his awakening, we believe that one, he gained awakening through his own efforts, and so what he learned about the principle of action is going to be important. He saw that beings were reborn in line with their actions, but it wasn't a very simplistic analysis. He saw there were a lot of actions in any one lifetime, there were negative ones, positive ones. And the ones that had a huge impact were the ones that happened right at the moment of death. In other words, it wasn't just past karma, it was also present karma acting together. That had a huge influence on where you were going to go. So he took that principle and applied it to his mind in the present moment, even before death, and he realized it. By looking at the present moment in terms of the Four Noble Truths, he could go beyond being reborn. The implication here is that you want to focus on the present moment, but focus on developing skillful qualities, because that's what the Four Noble Truths are all about. You see that you're suffering because of lack of skill in terms of your craving and ignorance. In fact, the word ignorance means lack of skill, in addition to meaning not knowing. Or you have the choice of developing the skills of the Eightfold Path and arriving at the end of suffering. So the choices have to be made. We take as a working hypothesis that they really do make a difference, and you want to follow through. That leads to the next faculty, which is persistence or effort. You actively do try to give rise to skillful qualities and abandon unskillful ones. Now, with some of those unskillful ones, all you have to do is watch them, and they go away. It's as if they're embarrassed. They thrive in a mind where you're not paying much attention. So when you turn your spotlight of your awareness on them, they shrivel up. But there are other causes of suffering, other unskillful habits of the mind. And where you stare at them, they stare right back. They're not the least bit intimidated. In that case, the Buddha said you have to exert a fabrication. Look at the way you breathe, look at the way you talk to yourself, look at the images you hold in mind, the feelings you focus on. How can you work with these things to undercut the mind's desire to go with those unskillful, unskillful habits? Otherwise, you really do have to put out an effort. There are very few images in the canon of people coasting their way across the ocean of suffering into the harbor safely without any effort. There are more images of warriors going into battle, craftspeople trying to develop skills. People in searching for something. You do have to put out an effort. But you're going to reflect on it. 
because brute effort without reflection doesn't get you anywhere. This is why we have to work on specifically on the qualities that allow us to reflect more and more clearly. The first is mindfulness. The way the Buddha teaches mindfulness is not just keeping things in mind, although that is an important part of it. You keep in mind the fact that you want to work on skillful qualities, develop them, and abandon unskillful ones. You have to keep in mind what you remember of how you've successfully dealt with these things in the past, and how you can recognize unskillful qualities when they're small. So you can deal with them in time. But mindfulness also involves alertness, watching what you're doing, and ardency, trying to do this well. And you're ardent about being alert, and you're trying to be alert to your ardency. That right there. We see again the combination of commitment and reflection right in the midst of mindfulness practice. And what is mindfulness practice for? It's for getting the mind to settle down. You have one frame of reverence. That's when we're working on the breath right here. And you really try to stick with it. Because when the mind can stay with one object, it's going to see things a lot more clearly. And it gets nourished at the same time. That's to keep up the practice. The mind needs its nourishment. So we find it in the concentration. As the mind gets still and more nourished, that's when discernment arises. Discernment in what you're doing right now, which ties back to our conviction what the Buddha learned on the night of his awakening. That present karma really does play a huge role in shaping your experience now and on into the future. So you really want to be very careful, very attentive to what you're doing right now. And as you work on getting the mind more and more at ease in the concentration, more and more inclined to want to get into concentration, more skilled at it, you begin to see where is the craving that causes the suffering? Where is the ignorance that causes suffering? You're, you see, we're putting unnecessary burdens on the mind through your lack of skill. With conviction, it just said, this is where you look. With discernment, you actually see. And it comes from committing yourself to the heightened mind, in other words, the practice of concentration, and then reflecting on it while you're doing it. So we're not here just to accept willy-nilly whatever comes up in the mind, or simply to watch what's coming up in the mind. We have a program. We have an agenda. Trying to work on being skilled in developing skillful qualities. Think of the Buddhist image of the person who wants to get milk out of a cow by twisting the horn. You can twist and twist and twist. You can put a lot of energy in, a lot of effort, but you're not getting any milk. Now some people will say, well, just stop twisting. Just be there with the cow. Look at the cow. And you're not wearing yourself out with the effort, and you're certainly not harassing the cow, but you're still not getting any milk. You have to realize there are other parts of the cow that you pull on, other parts that you twist. When you pull on the udder, you get the milk. And you learn that through reflection, looking at your efforts and seeing whether they're not bearing any fruit. You're not saying that effort is bad, simply that you haven't found the right way to do it. So we have the desire to do this well, and we put in the effort to do it well. That's the commitment part. Then we pay close attention to what we're doing, and we use our ingenuity to figure out when things are going well, when, why they're going well, and when things are not going well, why they're not going well. That's how we arrive at the kind of discernment that really pierces into things. 
we learn through doing and watching while we're doing it. Think of John Lee's many examples of developing a skill, learning how to sew a pair of pants, how to weave a basket. how to make clay tiles. You have to commit yourself to want to do these things and to want to do them well. And then you watch yourself in action. That's how you learn. It's a long-standing principle that the things you know best are the things that you've, you're doing, the things you've done. Our problem is that we don't pay much attention to what we're doing as we go through life and are shaping our experience from moment to moment to moment. But if you want to see it happen, you have to want to try to do it well. If you don't say no to your unskillful urges, you simply see them pass, 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 but you don't really know why. Why, are the mind, why is the mind churning up these unskillful thoughts? What's the allure? You don't really know the allure unless you've thwarted it, said no, and see how the mind responds, see who responds in there. So it's watching yourself in action, watching yourself in action, trying to do something really well. That's how you gain the Dharma.